change or the, the, the chart of accounts had changed back in last July 1st. I had somewhere in the vicinity of 145 um, accounts in, in my seven budgets. Um, we're down to about 115 lines now after we, we did the chart of accounts. So um, I'll, I'll go into a few things, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that we've been working on. We'll be working on going forward how I arrived at the budget numbers. <clears throat> and if you have any uh, questions on, on some of the points that I haven't hit on, on, on the budgets themselves, um, I guess that's how we can go with that, uh, okay. specific questions. Um, part of my goals and objectives for, for this past year was, was looking at um, our pricing um, in the department. In other words, who we're dealing with for vendors, can, can we do better, you know, uh, searching other vendors. Um, such as the uniform company is, is, is for one, um, and a lot of our um, mechanics, things that we're purchasing too. Um, we, we had pretty good luck in that. Uh, we saw significant uh, savings uh, in uniforms as an example. There was an ongoing contract. Um, we brought in another uniform company. Um, for, for, for all the, the staff, it was about $7,000 less a year, water, sewer, and general budget alone. And again, I just want to give some examples of us. You know, I'm not going to run down everything that we found. You know, uh, that we, we got a better better price on. But uh, and part of it, uh, it we we're going th we're going through the whole department, and it's still a work in progress. Um, and then also, um, we were tasked to focus on revenues, which we were looking at them uh, regardless. Um, again, part of my goals and objectives. My second year in here. I finally found enough time to dig into the, drill down a little deeper into the department and figure out where we're at and, and where our purchasing comes from and what we're paying for things. Um, so I did just recently um, change um, the, the um, excavation permit, uh, driveway access permit, um, and then access permits on, on, on town property, um, which will generate approximately, we don't get a lot of them, it's mostly utility companies. Um, but it should generate somewhere in the vicinity of five hundred to a thousand dollars more a year as far as revenues. Mm -hmm. um, part of my goals and objectives this year was to review the water and sewer regulations. Um, we've done part of it; we dug into it, but we expected it to go into the next fiscal year for because uh, there's a lot to it. We're going through everything and, and rewriting what we need to rewrite. But we did look at the the revenue portion. Uh, we looked at connection fees. Um, and, and so on and so forth, and we're pretty much either above or where we need to be at on those revenues. So we haven't, I haven't touched them yet until we dig in deeper, but it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of places to go on in, in those two areas. Um, <clears throat> we're, um, I'm involved in a water sewer um, study and how it relates to our capital improvement plan, our five year, uh, which we're expecting to have time bond come in on the fourth, um, which um, I would, I would, I like to see the, the select board, and the finance committee, and possibly the capital planning committee maybe uh, see that presentation. Right now, it's scheduled for the fourth, I believe. Um, April fourth. Yes. And what um, time? I think the appointment is seven forty-five for the board meeting. We have a tri board that night, anyways. Yeah. Oh, they're going to be presenting here at the yes. select board. Yes. And they they said they need about an hour, but. It might be closer to 45 minutes, but they wanted an hour for the, the presentation this time bond. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working on right now a pavement management program, uh, I'm talking with a consultant um, so that we can we can figure out how our, our pavement management is doing against uh, you know the monies we're receiving for Chapter 90. We all know we probably don't get enough money, uh, but this will give me a pretty good idea, and I would be able to generate a, a capital plan going forward on our roads too, as far as the uh, the general budget. Um, there's talks of, of an anaerobic uh, digester um, coming online in Greenfield. 
Um, that relates to our sludge hauling out of the wastewater treatment plant. Um, it's become astronomical because some plants have shut down, so we're trucking their sludge uh, all the way to Lowell now. Um, I sent them a, a letter of support, um, and they're looking to, to make it like a, uh, not a, not a region-wide, but they're looking for six or seven um, uh, other towns to, to be involved. In other words, they're not opening up everywhere, but we were invited. Um, it's in its infancy stages. They're, they're talking with DEP. Uh, they're looking for grant money and whatnot. So I'll have more information on that probably late summer. Uh, but it's a potential of, of big savings on hauling our sludge as far as the sewer budget. Yes. What do they do? Is it an organism? Is that what you said? An anaerobic? Yeah, anaerobic digester. They take the sludge, uh, the bugs, well, make a long story short, the bugs do what they do. What is it, whatever's left, they're going to press. And apparently, um, they have an avenue now to use that as usable um, fertilizer when they're done. So. And generate methane to create electricity. Right. Mm. right. So, how much do you pay for that service now? Uh, sludge. Okay, so a change in the chart of accounts. This is where it gets a little crazy with the chart of accounts. It's under sewer, right? Yeah. Uh, I have 162,000 budgeted, but I want to say we came in somewhere around 130 last year. But it was originally when the, the plants, the other plant, shut down in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, we were looking at 260 thousand dollars a year. Um, there's only three facilities we can haul to now, and I have an agreement with Lowell. Um, so it's a lot of money, but we're doing okay for considering we could be hauling it uh, many more miles away. So who, who hauls it for you? Uh, that's done through the um, Solid Waste District. They they do the, the contract on that, and I believe it's uh, Walls Trucking right now is the contractor. Um, so that's kind of some of the things we've been focusing on and, and what we're going to be focusing on going forward. Um, so my goals and objectives kind of fed right into when, when we were asked to work together as department heads and figure out how we could save money. Um, it, it worked out real well for us because we we're already working on that as far as uh, preparing for this year's budget and um, you know trying to, trying to do right by the taxpayer and, and get the best pricing we can get for, for all our things. Um, So the, the, the highway budget, it, it's showing, uh, if you look at the numbers, it's showing about a 41,000, for even numbers, I'll use even numbers to, to um, explain it, but it shows a, a decrease of about $41,000 from last year's budget, um, but 25,500 of that's been moved to the building maintenance budget, and, and the reason for that is um, I wanted to reflect in building maintenance what we really put into our buildings, so I moved uh, a half a person's salary the building maintenance person to to the building maintenance uh, budget. That's a new line item for this year, new account number, and one thousand for overtime. Um, so you take the twenty five five away. Um, we're, we're right around fifteen, say sixteen thousand um, less than last year. Um, building maintenance, um, highway building maintenance for the garage only. I also moved over to the building maintenance. Um, budget, mm -hmm. which was $3,680, but I increased that to $6,000. Um, we're starting to go through a few things with our building down there that uh, I can tell you I'm already 4000 in the red right now as we speak um, with different electrical issues and whatnot. But, um, so the, the savings in the actual highway budget is somewhere around $12,000 from last year's budget. And like I said, that's due to uh, we had a retirement, so mm -hmm. we were able to hire somebody at a, a, a lower rate, mm -hmm. um, and also the, the, the price checking we've been doing and going through, um, pricing our different accounts and whatnot. That's great. Uh, so the budget, all the budgets are also put together. On, we're, in, we're in negotiations with the unions. Mm -hmm. So none of the budgets reflect any, any kind of um, uh, agreements with the negotiations, just so we know I'm running on, on the numbers that I'm running on now as far as payroll. 
um, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So um, and we don't know where we're going to land in negotiations as far as um, cost of living or anything like that. So um, I just wanted to point that out. Are you fully staffed? Right now? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so that meeting too, last time I was here when we were talking to the planning board, it was in reference to stormwater. Mm -hmm. And David had mentioned that this summer it's going to involve a couple of more work for a couple of your people. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? It's not going to involve more work? Well, I didn't say that. Well, oh, we, no, we, but you mentioned that we have money set aside for it. Yeah. That's, sorry, I didn't get that part yet. And so I just was curious if you feel the amount of money, it's like 300 some odd thousand? 390. Is that, is that enough to do what you need to do to keep current with the laws? That yes. Are being yes. The the three hundred ninety thousand represents the first five years of the new MS four permit. That's for engineering in in house costs to put the new permit completely in line and functioning. Mm -hmm. um, the three hundred ninety thousand was on the high side. We were given a, a a low and a high range from from the consultant firm CEI. Um, as it looks right now, uh, I know we're going to be closer to the low side. Um, we're for, for the first five years. Um, but going forward, we got to add street sweeping, we got to add a few things. I'm not sure where we're going we're gonna to pan out. Um, if we're going to be able in house to check all the outfalls and, and meet the requirements on that. Um, but that, that article has plenty of money in it for us to, to get going in the first five years of the permit. And, and I'm, I will say that I don't believe that we're going to be on the high side of the 390,000. We're going to be uh, on the shorter side. As a matter of fact, I think I brought that. So is your staffing up to par where you'll need to be with doing all these extra things that you're right now yes and then when we get to the point where the where, where the um, it's completely in place mm -hmm. you know we need to decide uh, at that point a couple of years down the road from now are we can we do this cheaper by adding a staff member or is it just as easy to, to stay with a consultant firm to do all the catches and, and whatnot um, as far as what they're looking for the other part of it is what we find wrong with the drainage system that we have to repair. And that's a big unknown right now. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have much for records for the drainage, um, what the pipes look like and, and what's going on with them. Um, so yes, the, the article is, is fine for now if that's the question. I mean, mm -hmm. we're going to be fine there. Um, I have no worries there. And as we get into year two and three, I do know that the second year we do have to start sweeping the the, uh, what they call the target area in the permit area twice a year. Um, I mean, and again, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think we're looking at a lot of money. You know, we're looking at probably 10 hours or 15 hours of sweeping each time they do it. So um, that's the easy part. That'd be easy enough to budget. Um, but I don't know where we're going to land on when they start. we start testing the outfalls and, and what they find. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the big thing. It's an unknown. So the next thing was, um, I know that we had discussed in the past, was Soterka Park mm -hmm. and the maintenance for there. Is that something DPW is going to be doing now? Uh, I have not been approached on that, or um, it, it's not in the budget, no, not at this point. So who maintains it? Well, Who's going to maintain well, it in their plans? Right, right now, the uh, Soterka Park is under uh, bid for its final reconstruction. Mm -hmm. So during the summertime, that park's going to be a const active construction site. There's not going to be any real maintenance to talk about. The select board haven't uh, made a decision as to who's going to maintain that uh, park right now. That's under the purview of the Park and Rec Commission. They have pretty much sole authority over the, uh, the park lands in town. Okay. So I don't... So I guess that's a long way of saying that in the hands of Park and Rec, and I don't think there's a need for us to worry about this until that final rest of Rec. I just don't want it dumped on him and yeah. his department because uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't get done. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to be a problem this year. Uh, David and I have had discussions on it <coughs> as far as going forward. Um, I have seen the plans. Uh, I've been in, involved in the email loop. I haven't been involved in the actual putting it together, but um, I did send some comments a little while back on what I reviewed. Um, so again, on my end, it's kind of in the holding pattern, but I have been in discussions with David on that. 
as far as what the future holds. Okay. So since we're, we'll, we'll, we may as well talk about cemeteries a little bit. Um, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I met with the board. Um, our cemetery committee kind of um, kind of was dissolving. Um, so you go back to 1928. Uh, there was a town meeting vote that the cemetery committee has has all the authority as far as um, selling plots, um, signing the paperwork, and all that. So. Um, being that it was kind of dissolving and we had a couple of new people interested in joining, in joining the cemetery committee, I requested from the board at least to cover the gap uh, to have signing authority. I mean, the, the phone rings, somebody's got to take care of you know, the, the funeral homes and whatnot. Um, but I will say we're meeting this Saturday and it looks like we're going to have four committee members so I can have a better understanding. We'll have a better understanding of how we want to proceed with the cemeteries after Saturday where we're going to go. Mm -hmm. um, but in order for the Department of Public Works to take any of that over, it's got to go to town meeting vote well, because of the way it was written in 1928, just so we all know. Um, but they did give me the authority to, to get this whole thing jump started again and, and um, help out where we can until we figure out where the new committee is going to take everything. So I think that... How many on the committee? So you're four right now, but were you down to what? Like nobody? We were we were down to three on the list, but I believe it was down to two. Um, oh. I've had no return phone calls from the third. Um, so this, uh, uh, you know, it'll it'll show five, but I think it's four. Um, okay. That should be there on Saturday. We're meeting on at, at the, the the Barstow's place for a meeting. So they take the calls and uh, and take care of selling the plot. Who does the mowing? Okay. Um, the mowing is, is separate. Um, that's separate into the actual cemetery's budget. That's contracted. Uh, we contract the mowing out. Um, the other side of it, as far as the cemetery committee, we need to come to a conclusion on, uh, because they have bylaws, they have rules. Um, there was some nice history there that I found in a thumb drive. So um, we're going to try and vet that all out Saturday, who's, who's responsible for what, and then I can run from there. But we've been. We've been the phone number on the website uh, since November, October, November, because okay. uh, there's been really nowhere for, for people to go. And, and myself, personally, I've been swimming through that, trying to figure out how people out too. Uh, we do have one, one person in-house that's been a big help also on that, who was a volunteer for almost 30 years on the outside doing it. Um, so, but I'll have more information after Saturday on that, so it's kind of hard to say. That budget has not changed, I've reached out, and. It appears that the, the contracting is going to be the same price this year, I'm told. So um, that's that. Um, snow and ice, there's no change for this year. Um, we made some changes to our operations. Uh, I would say that uh, this year hasn't been a lot of snowstorms. I think eight, eight registered events that I have uh, written down. But we had probably 10 other events that were glare ice in the middle of the night, you know, freezing rain type stuff. Um, existing budget, we're going to be okay. I'm hoping that I don't have to come looking for some more money this year. I think we're going to be fine with the budget um, now that I said that. Um, so I, I have not increased the snow and ice. We increased it $5,000 last year, but I think it's an, an important to note that, again, I dug into the departments and we made a few operational changes that hasn't affected public safety, uh, but it's helped the budget. So. Um, you mentioned something earlier about street sweeping. Mm -hmm. we, do we still can do that now or no? No, no. We haven't swept the streets in probably, I think, four years. When they went, they went to straight salt, uh, no sand before I came aboard. And so now you're talking about having the possibility of doing it again, or just just with it within the permitted area, not the okay. whole town, just within the permitted area. And like I said, I think it'll be somewhere around 20, 20 hours a year. Say sixty-five dollars an hour or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. um, but I also might be able to work with um, DEP and EPA and, and show that you know we just don't have a lot of stuff on within the area on the road. So um, it's a work in motion with that as far as working with. Um, so is there anything that's not in your budget you'd like to see added? Um, there's, there's, well, there's a few things that I've been looking at. Um, as, as silly as it may sound, our guardrails are in really bad shape in town. 
Um, you know, eventually I might be looking for capital money to, to do, you know, some, some good areas of, of the guardrail in town that are not quite to code or um, replacing concrete posts um, is pretty time consuming. Um, the other thing that, that just came on the radar was on March 4th, um, the Governor, Governor Baker signed, um, signed a bill for OSHA, for municipalities to be covered under OSHA standards. Um, we don't know what that means yet. I think it means more training, more than anything. But um, meeting the, the local Department of Public Safety out of Boston, I mean, we're covering a lot of that stuff, but I'm not quite sure where, how far they're taking the OSHA standards. That's something that just came on the radar in the last couple of days that I read. Um, but I don't think it'll have major impacts on us. Um, <clears throat> let's see, building maintenance. Um, Again, I, I kind of got to the building maintenance ahead of time because I wanted to show you what the changes were on the highway. So the building maintenance budget, I've been looking at that. Um, actually, when I submitted my budget, um, the senior center exterior maintenance is, is mislabeled. It should be, um, it should have been senior center maintenance. Um, so the the XT stands for exterior, but it was actually maintenance, um, which I have a note to, to have uh, Justin change that uh, the account. Um, so I, there was twenty thousand five hundred in the in the senior center maintenance budget. Um, taking over the the building maintenance this past year, it, we're kind of in a transition with the new buildings coming in. You know, what are we going to need with the new buildings as opposed to the older the, the older buildings we're dealing with now? So it's been kind of a little difficult for me to wrap my head around what we need for each building at this point in time and what we're going to need two years from now or four years from now. Um, but the, when I when I submitted the budget, I left I left basically the whole budget alone and added the the DP the stuff that came out of the, the, the highway budget. Um, David and I had had a few discussions about what we needed to put into the different buildings, and then you know the senior center was it, it's kind of on the on the pro, in process of, of getting going soon. I hope. Um, so David uh, cut that budget basically in half, um, ten thousand. Um, so I took another look at, at what we needed that mo those monies for, and I was looking to, I think I'm going to need 12000 left on that account to cover cover what we got going on in the existing senior center. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I had spoken to David. Um, I'd like to see that only a cut as $8,000 um, rather than the rather than the ten. So North Hadley Hall is not under your North Hadley Fire Station? Okay. It's not in my budget any longer. If, right. if you look, and there's mm -hmm. there's nothing there. I think uh, Chief Spank Mabel has a little bit of money to, to get him through the, the winters and whatnot up there. That's, mm -hmm. that's been over to his budget. Um, this is a this is a maintenance budget, not the operational budget. You'll find that it's North Hadley Village Hall operational has money in it for electricity, the alarm for heating. But we're not uh, we're not repairing anything over there. Now this this budget here, um, every every building or every department had, had, had has little projects they need to get done that really don't fall under capital, you know, under ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars or under five thousand dollars. And my thinking, it, it doesn't reflect here, um, but my thinking is is at some point we really should should look at establishing another account number down the bottom and have it uh, as a general repair budget, like we we lose a heating system or you know a twenty thousand or, or a ten thousand dollar item we do have the money in there to do it um, David and I had talked about it a little bit the other day it was kind of a, an afterthought after I submitted my budget um, mm -hmm. there there is there's there's I want to I want to say there's extra monies in here but some of those monies are kind of built into some of these accounts already but I'd like to 
go through and quantify them and, and have it in its own line item so we have a, a, a clear revision of exactly what we're using for maintenance and what we're using for repairs. Mm -hmm. um, so um, what are some of the uh, big items that you can foresee us um, needing to repair for maintenance? Like in the senior center, what, what are some of the big things that might need maintenance on? Well, this past, uh, this past summer we had to, um, well, we put some money in the electrical so they could have AC over there. Okay. The big thing with the existing senior center and, and is that the heating system in there is, is, is just beating. Um, mm -hmm. It's just hanging on. It doesn't heat the building well. Um, you know, a complete system change there would be kind of crazy at this point. But um, I personally have my fingers crossed from what I know about the heating system over there that gets us through until the new building's up. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, so it's a bunch of Band-Aids on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, at the same time, you know, I certainly wouldn't be asking for $100,000 for a new heating system with a new right. building coming down line, so. Um, <laughs> You know, um. so on this money for the buildings, really, once if you're not using it, it's just going to go back to free cash. How you know what's the plan? I guess we should think about the plan for, for instance, you know, we talked about in CPA, we talked about um, painting of this place, it's considered not going through because it's considered maintenance um, but the problem is is because we don't have a savings for that do we David, for maintenance I mean once if we don't use it it goes away <coughs> so it's not like we're saving I you know a little bit here or there or there and then when something big comes up we can have it we have to actually when, when something big comes up because it's the paintings a big job over two hundred thousand dollars well that's so that's supposedly the work of the capital plan so oh so we put it through capital right. put it through capital so this is only going to be the small stuff right under the 10 under 10 yeah projects under ten thousand and, and, and everybody has them they bump into little things from from year to year you know um, so okay so you have thirty thousand two hundred that's for Public safety. Yes. What What are you doing over there? And again, that's that's labeled exterior maintenance, but it, it's not exterior maintenance. It's it's again, it's maintenance. Um, so all these like um, town hall custodial and all that, is that the subcontracted out? Yes. So you don't have one person. Yes, that's you? a cleaning company. Right. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Why instead? Why do we? Spend two hundred dollars painting, two hundred thousand dollars painting a building. What if we just hired a painter that was on our staff? Surely it would cost less than two hundred dollars, uh, two hundred thousand dollars a year, right? Well, you have different a building like this. You you have different things going on, and probably have to. I'm not sure what the history is here. I don't know if it needs to be abated for for lead. Um, there's a lot, you know, a lot of things looking at one person. I mean, this is a, a pretty big undertaking. Well, they have to um, pay prevailing. Uh, prevailing. Well, if not hired on staff. You hired um, just if you had a staff person who could do yeah. things like painting, or some of these other things that you have to contract out for. Yeah. It seems like it would be cheaper and it would be, um, you know, more exactly personalized. For yeah. Well, we have one staff member, you know, on on duty that's that's handling the the broken doorknobs, the you know the the small maintenance items from day to day. Yeah. Um, plus, he actually has jumped in when we've had carpentry projects. When we've hired a carpenter to help save us money, he's jumped in and worked with them. Um, but I think going forward with the new buildings, where we land with these things, I mean, it certainly wouldn't hurt to look at, you know, should we have a full-time custodial person on staff? Um, I, I think thought at one point we were doing that. The person was going to handle the maintenance or something. Didn't Gary yeah. Berg's original position Yes, that's where that morphed from, from the person before him. Yes. Yes. But they can't, they can't do all the, the, the work that the custodial people will do because that happens off hours and they worry about union overtime at that, at that point. Yeah. But I mean, if, if you take a look at what we spend on the actual cleaning company and everything, I mean, um, I want to say it's around 30 two thousand dollars a year somewhere in that vicinity of just the cleaning of the the, the buildings 
Um, and how often do they do it? Uh, some of them run a two-week cycle, some run on every week, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, the town halls once a week. Um, I think the senior the senior center is on a two-week cycle, but um, you know it certainly isn't. It wouldn't hurt to take a look at that. You know, if we had somebody on staff full time, and they they not only would be a custodial, but um, they could help out with other things too. Carpentry, painting, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean that's where Gary has fallen into. He's, he's turned into more of a um, not your laborer, but he's turned into, you know, he is a carpenter. He does a lot of carpentry. Um, he does have a boiler license. He does do some of the fixes for us sometimes. So uh, he's kind of like a, a, a standalone type employee. You know, he's got a bunch of licensing, uh, but doesn't fall into the, the janitorial because he is busy. You know, well, since we started the work order system, I see how busy he is with the buildings. Um, and that's why I, I kind of split his payroll both ways put it into the building maintenance budget. So uh, kind of a starting point of morphing into our new buildings as we go, but certainly something we can look at going forward. Yeah, and then couldn't you, rather than the normal seven to three hour, maybe there's somebody that can work so they can do the buildings in the evening while people are working or something, you can make it a second shift position. Mm-hmm, let me take a look at that. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, potentially help out with the actual shoveling and the snow blowing at the end of the storm. Mm -hmm. uh, my previous community, would, you know, they only well, had three janitors, but they covered a lot of area mm -hmm. in Greenfield. So, yeah, it's something we can look at. Great. Any big projects happening for the sewer and the water department? Uh, yes. Um, right now, we, we actually, I, I did want to mention at the beginning, I uh, had at the top of my list, but I jumped right on the, the price check and, and uh, contracts. But uh, we were, we're in good shape. We, we got two grants this year. One of them was a compact, um, community compact grant, which was for 50000 towards our um, mission SCADA system in electrical upgrades in our pump stations. Um, that project's actually going on now. It's somewhat about a third complete. Um, we also, um, I'm in the process of working on an MOU with, um, with uh, for a flat grant for Moody Bridge Road to fix that up. Um, and again, I'm working with the, it's, the FLAP is Federal Land Access Program. Um, so that we should be almost done with the MOU soon to, to send to the board on that. Um, that's somewhere around a $230,000 project. It's a 20% match on our end. So it's about $185,000. Um, so yes, we got the grant thing going on. Um, we have unidirectional flushing. Finally, we're going to be able to get started on that in the water department. Uh, we've been waiting on our GIS to get all all buttoned up and where it needed to be. Um, clarifier project just finished up uh, back in the fall. Um, what else have we got this year? I think that we're waiting, we're, we're still waiting on DEP to get back to us on the, the high pump test at Mount Warner Wells. Um, and our sanitary survey, they, they wanted us to, to make a decision on our wells and do a high pump test up there. Um, but we have not received an answer back from DEP what they want us to do with the waste when we do the high pump test when they test it. So we've kind of been going back and forth with DEP now for about six or seven months without an answer on that on that project. Um, I'm trying to think what else we got. I think that's about it for... You did some I&I &I work. Yeah, we finished up the I&I &I and um, there was a... a I and I initiative from from DEP that was due December 30th of this year. Um, we were able to, <clears throat> excuse me, go through our pump stations, give them run times, and we were we were able to <clears throat> skirt about $130,000 to to meet the the mandate from from DEP. They expected our pump run times. We did smoke testing in what they call Area One, which is basically the area of Route Nine here, and it. All our pump run times and all our data is showing DEP that we have a, as of now, have a minor I and I problem, which is inflow and infiltration of groundwater into our sewer system. 
Um, I think we had six or seven small things we got to do. Uh, one pump, one sump pump, and then uh, in a basement, and uh, a few a few roof leaders to check out. But the uh, point being is we were looking at about $130,000 to put flow meters in all our sewers, and we were able to meet the initiative uh, for, for about $30,000 going through our pump run times and working with a consultant to get the information to DEP. So that consumed quite a bit of our time back in, in late summer, early fall, my time. But we were successful. Nice. We'll see what they bring to us next year. <laughs> um, I can't think of any other larger projects. Um, the dike. Well, yeah, the levy assessment. We're not sure where that's going to land yet. We're, we, we went through that that whole process uh, with the company that tested the, the levy. Um, and I think we're, we're just now waiting for the final report on the levy system that, that protects the town. Uh, we're not sure where that's going to land as far as you know if it has any deficiencies or not, but that potential uh, could be a potential uh, large capital item, I guess, or, or some or get some sort of grant or help on that if it proves to be true. But we don't know what the results are yet. Um, there, there's not a lot of grants out there. Um, uh, one grant that's out there is a culvert culvert replacement grant, but. There was a project that was hanging out there before I started that I just happened to come across in the files. Um, so we're going to go. We're going through a culvert assessment now with our culverts. Um, I think there's 12 of them. And once we get the assessment done, and then we, if we find any uh, discrepancies within culverts, we can at least apply for those grants. We got to know where the failures are and whatnot. Um, the other thing too is Mass Works, which used to be a bunch of small grants. Now it's one. They call it Mass Works. Um, we need to get some projects together, and I think they mostly have to be shovel ready, if I'm remembering right. Um, but if we can get some projects together, that's another grant uh, potential. Um, and then the other thing that's taking off that is uh, complete streets. Um, I think Northampton's involved in complete street work um, in a few of the locals, but there's potential money there too. Um, so. I would probably need help from some sort of subcommittee or committee to help put that together, come up with eight or nine projects, you know, and then and then submit for, for complete street money. I think um, Sunderland just got a two hundred thousand dollar grant. They're gonna put some sidewalks along uh, forty seven and, and I think some road work. So um, that's not a match grant. I think that's you know straight up two hundred thousand they got if I'm not mistaken. So. It's things like that we got to look into, or I have to find the time to. to I don't. Take it. What's complete streets? It's uh, um, it, it's it's actually another piece of Chapter 90. I don't want to relate it to Chapter 90, but it, it stay funds. Oh. You know, you get you put projects together. They look at many different things. They look at uh, accessibility, uh, bikeways, walkways, roadways, um, and, and again, you you apply for the money. You have to go to a few meetings. Um, I'm just trying to generalize. Sure. Um, and, and you apply for it, you have potential of getting getting money. But I mean, it's not, it's not just for sidewalks; it's for no, no. It's oh, your streets, it's walks. Your streets. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But how are our sidewalks? Do we repair them, or we we repair the the hazards? Um, that's where we're at on our sidewalks. The, mm -hmm. Some of the older trees have gotten really big and pushed the walkways up, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't real good to our equipment in the winter either. But um, yeah, we've had to had to uh, touch a bunch of them up. So is that something you would want to take on with this complete street things? Yeah. Open yeah. up some of the sidewalks. I know over here it's pretty. Pretty bad. Yeah. Pretty bad. Yeah. Trip hazards. Uh, and you know the, some of the nice trees that are left back, you know, left on Middle Street are so close to the block. You know, they're healthy. They're nice trees. You know, you can run into different things with that too. But um, yeah, definitely the sidewalks um, could use some work. Well, that's something, if you don't mind, I'll look into. Sure. Okay. What, the sidewalk? The complete streets, which is the sidewalks. No, I don't want to take that task. <laughs> I, well, I think I, I, I think <laughs> I met the first requirement. I did go to a meeting. I had to go to a, like an eight-hour meeting or something. I did I did do that part of the requirement last year, but uh, we got a little busy with other things. So um, I think that's about it, unless I missed something. Well, that's perfect. All this busy stuff going on.
things that we don't even realize that you do or, or know about in the background. Yeah, there's there's um there's a lot of moving pieces to a DPW, mm -hmm. a lot of moving pieces, and I think a lot of times you don't hear from me because I'm just buried in the work and just trying to forge ahead. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a good opportunity to let everybody know in a, in a situation like this what we're doing. So how many trailers are you working out of now? Ah, uh, I knew I forgot something. Um, two. Well, actually, three. There's one attached to the main building. That's the break room. Is there a need for more? Since you don't have a, a building? Um, one of the trailers is in pretty good shape. Uh, one's been there 20 years. Um, but that is something that I have on my capital plan this year. I'm looking at, I know there's been studies done in the past, but I, I think it's time to start talking about the DPW building down there. Mm -hmm. or lack thereof, if, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there was talk of a double wide trailer being put in there, removing the tutor there. Um, you know, if it looks like we're not going to see anything happen down there for eight or ten years, that that's one thing. But well, I think I think we want to look at the look at the big picture now and see where it brings us. You know, mm -hmm. what what do we want to do with that? What do we what do we need? We um, need a building. Correct. You know, we need a, an addition probably on the main highway building. Um, and I will say this, um, the community is only so big. I mean, if we build a building with the square footage we need, in my opinion, administratively, we're never going to need any more. I mean, I don't see the DPW doubling in staff 20 years from now. Um, Not unless the town doubles. Correct. In size. Correct. But you you're still going to have 64 miles of road. Um, you know, in your 21 miles of sewer. And do all your like new vehicles and things that you're purchasing, do, do they have a place to be undercover? Uh, we did We did complete the pole barn this, this uh, fall. Um, Gary Burton finished that up with, with a couple of helpers. Um, they are undercover. You know, they're, they're not heated out in the pole barn, but it's all closed in with garage doors now, mm -hmm. which is, is, is helpful. The equipment's protected. I, I must say the older equipment's out in the pole barn and we're, we're, we are making room in the, the existing building for, for the newer equipment. Um, but yeah, I mean, we definitely should should be talking about that. Hmm. Yeah, I thought it was being discussed a few years ago and then if you look in the uh, book that we received on the from the planning board, the long-term thing, it was actually this year that they had put in there for the DPW to be built, right? I, I think, think so originally, yeah. Yep. Well, I remember from when I first started, and this, that was the first talk we talked about the DPW, <laughs> and then you got cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> before me, before my time. <laughs> well, I think um, it's important that you yep. be cut. That you be no, really I mean, you saw that people cut the line. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, just, just everyday business, um, we, we could be so much more productive and, and efficient. Mm -hmm. You know, an, an excuse for, for for saying, but in a real home, you know. Absolutely, um, I agree with it you. It does. Uh, well, you can ask David. It gets pretty cozy down there when you got four or five consultants. You got maps rolled out, and uh, it's interesting. But you know, we do what we have to do for now. But, so it'd be nice to have all our maps in one room. You know, a vault, um, all our records. Uh, we have an intercom system between the two trailers now that works, but. There's a, you know, a lot of talking back and forth, uh, but yeah, I mean, I it's definitely on my radar. It was it was on my radar when I started. So, um. yeah, I agree. I think it should be put on the radar. Well, thank you. That's it. Doing a great job. You don't want to go through all the count. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if there's no, something fine. that comes up, uh, just give me a jingle if, if I've missed anything. Is there's so, nothing that you need from us? We don't have a few more million dollars for you, but. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't answer quick enough, no. Uh, no, you know, uh, you know, and again, I, this budget, these budgets are designed for um, maintenance and, and um, they're maintenance budgets, you know. I mean, if something catastrophic happens, these budgets ain't built for that. Mm -hmm. um, they, they weren't when I got here. Mm -hmm. um, we deal with things as they come, but, you know, the highway budget, one tornadic event, and you know what happens to that budget with the overtime and whatnot. So um, I just wanted to point that out. I mean, we're mm -hmm. we're as thin as we can be um, to continue our operations. So great. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't have any other questions. Um, I appreciate you finding um, and, and being able to lower some of your costs. That's great. Oh, the HCOG, you purchase a lot through them, correct? Uh, I actually, last year, I went to the FURCOG. I oh. go through the FURCOG now. Oh, okay. As a matter of fact, I just sent the, the sheets in last week. Um, so yeah, the, the FURCOG, uh, our fuel comes from there. Um, okay. The procurement, paving. Okay. HCOG could provide those services for you? Um, yeah, uh, FERCOG actually provided a, f a few more services that I thought would be would be better for Hadley. Um, they can take on a procurement on the whim if, if we need them to, if something comes up. Um, familiarity, um, I, I think, has a lot to do with it. Um, the customer service is, is, is pretty pretty outstanding. When I need something, there's an instant answer. Um, things like that. I was a lot more comfortable with them. Excellent. Well, if we end up switching over, that makes it work easy <laughs> since you aren't familiar with it. <laughs> okay. That's it. I don't have any more questions. No, no. Gabriel, no. Great. Thanks for coming. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Like I said, feel free to give me a call if you have any questions that come up. I'm going to look at the complete streets thing. The reason I brought that up is because a lot of smaller communities, and I know Sunderland did it this way, is they, they formed a small committee mm -hmm. to assist the superintendent up there because there's just not enough time to put everything together. And it becomes more of a more of a community um, input on six mm -hmm. or seven projects, and we pick one or two and then send off for the, for the grant. Well, do you have projects in mind that well, you would like to do? Sidewalks is, is one of them. Mm -hmm. You know our our, our sidewalks, uh, not necessarily Route Nine, but. Um, is there a street that needs multiple things? Yeah, I don't think um, it covers water or sewer though. Mm -hmm. Probably uh, not. That's another. The, the capital may take on another look this year. You know, once we get through everything, um, I think we're going to think more in terms of before we re redo a whole road completely, repave it. We need to take a look at the hundred-year-old infrastructure at the bottom and replace that first before. We repave the road. Um, it's upfront cost is a little more expensive, but you know, uh, you repave a, a roadway that's got a hundred-year-old water main on it, and you have rain, uh, main breaks for the next five years. Your road looks just as bad before you started. So, again, uh, saving in the long run a lot of money. Um, so it's another way to look at it. Uh, we Are there particular streets that you feel that need to be done like that? Like yeah, we have some four-inch main out there that you know. Um, it's, you know, you're talking um, firefighting capabilities. We have a four-inch main on uh, mm -hmm. Rocky Hill. The beginning section has a four-inch main in it that should be upgraded to 12. Now that, you know, we do have subdivisions up through there now, there's a lot more to protect. Um, the four-inch main concerns me just from, you know, from, from that aspect. Um, we're fortunate that nearby there's a 12-inch around the corner or something they can hook to, but um, I don't want to put a panic out there that you know we don't have firefighting capability because that's not true but um, you know when you look at the four inch mains and then the, we got hundred year old main on Bay Road that we've had four or five breaks on it since last year so um, hmm. and the sewer uh, route 9 I didn't talk about but route 9 is coming up and they, and they want to go from the town hall here all the way to South Maple on this next project rather than sections so um, I'm going to start cameraing some of the sewer out here. We got some old films that I'd like to see some newer data. Um, but there, there's a big project coming up in 2021, 2021 right now. Um, that could be uh, major water sewer monies that are going to be needed. So um, I do know we, we're going to put new vein in from here to East Street that we started already on the, on the last phase. So 12 inch water. So. All right. Okay. How about um, equipment? Are you putting anything new into the capital uh, I didn't. I, the only thing I didn't look at before I came is, is you know, I'm naturally going to stick to my capital plan. Um, and I can't remember what I have on it for this year. I didn't take a peek at it before it came up. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you for your time. Ten. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> That's my spare. Would you like to go over anything else? Yeah, just touch on a couple of things of where we are. Thank you, Marlon. Okay. I'm done. Yeah. You can hang out at more. Yeah, but nothing <laughs> meeting. Bye, Mario. Thank <laughs> 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 Is it Teresa? <laughs> no, actually, it's not. Terry's name. Okay. All right. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you, you Marlon. Bye. So uh, the select board are meeting after getting snowed out on the seventh. They have a big agenda for the twenty-first, but they did want to start with the tri board. If you thought that that was necessary, uh, if you had a chance to think about what you've learned already from the budget discussions, police, public works, education, general government, that kind of stuff. If you've got things that you want to talk to them, they're meeting this Wednesday, the 21st. I took the liberty of posting for you. Mm -hmm. If you don't want me to do that, I can take yank the uh, posting, but I had to make that decision within the 48 hour deadline. Um, I won't be able to be there. Okay. I'm flying out that night. Okay. So I guess uh, before I we go into that tri board thing, I guess I want to ask Gabriel what his thoughts were. At the last meeting I wasn't here and you had a discussion with Molly in reference to uh, what we thought and we planned ever since the last town meeting of working on um, getting IT, HR, and blah, 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 and so forth, and an override. And I did watch the... Um, meeting and I sense that the select board once again as we as I expected is not in favor of any of that and what kind of upset me was the fact that now we're even if we wanted to pursue it it's too late anyways because you can't put an article in for it correct you started asking Gabriel the yeah question okay so well, what were your board. thoughts on that I understand the select board can still open the warrant to put an article on it, mm -hmm. but it would have to go through them. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to do that, it would have to, I think, come as a request from the finance committee. Mm -hmm. So I did want to ask and get a feel around the committee for what people's thoughts were on the, the override right now. Molly made some good points, I thought, on form of government happening before the override, mm -hmm. um, about the time element and putting things together, about public input. And getting a public forum together and things like that. I do still feel that just in terms of capacity and kind of playing catch up, something's better than nothing. Yeah. I think it's a discussion we should have with the select board in terms of it would be great if the form of government would happen first, but if we take a look back at the last year or two, when is it ever going to happen? When do the boards both have the capacity, the time, or whatever to actually take these things on? And if we had additional staff support, ITHR and, and finance, I think it would enable the committees to be able to take on more. So I don't see any progress being made on form of government, let alone then the, the override stuff without some positions getting put in place. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, you can go through topic by topic, like would, should we try to do all the overrides at once in one big package? Is that what town meeting would go for? Would they go for just a little bit now and then maybe more in a year or two? You know, and can have all those discussions, but I'll turn it back to the committee. Where are people feeling right now in terms of if we want to ask the select board to seriously consider and or put on the warrant an override for the upcoming town meeting? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm in, I'm in favor as far as I understand we need the HR, the IT, and I get that. And, and I don't see that there's really any money here. I can't, I, I don't see that we're going to find it. So I, I see that that's where ultimately we're going to have to go with it. I don't feel that the town is going to go for it, especially after what we had just, you know, with, with all the new buildings and asking for more money. I feel that the form of uh, the ha doing the 
um, organization and the um, form of government would be would be better first and maybe we can even have some of those people start doing some of those duties if we can get job descriptions and go over all that and do the form of government or how you know and then we know exactly we would have more of a we would know better the dollar amounts we'd know better on uh, we would we could set up a committee to do a working committee to do some of this work and, and prepare it um, I just feel like that might be the way to go I don't think First of all, I don't think that we're going to get the override, even if we went for it. Um, and I think that um, if we don't go in, um, I'd rather see it the one shot because I don't think it would happen again um, for a second time asking for it. And I think that we need to be very specific and with the job duties and, and exactly what is what are you going to get for your money. I just don't see that. You know, if, if we can, that's great. I, 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 but I just don't see it happening. I don't feel that it will happen. So to back up really quick, on the committee that you're thinking of, like form of government, mm -hmm. did you mean like between, so like select board finance, a subcommittee of that group? Because we kind no, of tried the, that. No, I, I think that we should ask, um, similar to an ambulance or committee or the um, nice. the, the committee that does the uh, um, subcommittee. It's a subcommittee for the fire station or something. And you could have other residents on it. So I guess my question is, is that for the last year we've been hearing that this is, well, the, for the form of government, I should say that for the last, since four or five years, I've been hearing about that we're going to work on it and the select board wants to work on it but then you get changes in the select board you get different opinions in the select board as well as the finance committee mm -hmm. in my opinion i don't see the select board as it stands today the members that are in there now uh joining together in agreeing with that well i and think moving forward okay yeah uh after the last town meeting we all agreed that that was a focus for us was to get these things in place and, and in order and you also agreed to that as well. We all did. Um, and it keeps getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. And we are all part-time boards as well as a select board. They're not going to have time. And then you got issues coming up with these walk-on votes to get these new buildings, and then the buildings are having issues to begin with before they even get built. And they don't have time to focus, to me, on more than one or two big projects at a time. And this is a big project. And I agree with Gabriel that if you had people in place to give information or provide the information that's needed to make it better and to help us and the select board and David or whomever, uh, it would be better off for all of us. Because again, we are part time, not even part time, mm -hmm. okay? We all have full time jobs, so don't they? Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, I feel that that commitment is not going to come from them. Molly, as I watched the last meeting that I missed, I watch every meeting <laughs> and thoroughly, and you can go back and watch and see how people change their minds as different things happen. And I don't blame them. They're, they have a lot on their plate, I'm not, and David does this too. I, I get that. But you can't keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. So, we as a board, we agreed some, on something, okay? And now I kind of feel like, well, we're like the select board. Now we're not agreeing on things. Well, I agree that we need those things. I just don't agree that, um, you know, I think that I feel like the other one should come first. What, it's, it's, what other one? The form of government. I feel that that should come before the, um, before the override. I feel like you would have better, if, if you had, you know, right now, just for instance, the uh, the um, the treasurer's assistant. 
just doing HR work. I mean, if you knew exactly what positions you needed and where you, exactly where that money was going, it, it might, it, and exactly how much money you would need, it might be easier. I, I don't, I just, I don't fi feel that we're, if you go and we say we need these things, of course we need these things, I just don't see it passing after what, uh, all the money that we just, um, through um, all the new buildings that it's gonna happen. So in my opinion, I feel like you get the same amount of people when they have an agenda at town meetings. Mm -hmm. And then you have this probably, I don't know, I'll say 25% of taxpayers. Mm -hmm. And then you have this other 75% who don't care if your taxes go up because they don't show up at the meetings, right? Or they yeah. don't care what building happens or whatever. And I kind of feel like you need to reach out to those people and get them there because in all reality, this is a business and you need to treat it like business and then it's not even fair to the employees that work for this town. Well, here's the other thing is that not just do we need to pass it, get, get it to pass through the town meeting, but then there's the ballot. So a lot of those people will, even if it did pass the town meeting, because you got enough people to show up, now you have to get it to pass the ballot. Which I think your odds are better that it'll pass at the ballot by all those other people who are not going to come to the original town meeting. But that's my opinion. I I agree that it, trying is better than not doing anything, but at this point, our backs are against, I don't see the select board uh, approving it and allowing it. And we can't go out and get 12 signatures and put it on, because it's too late something that I asked about over a month ago. So I think we all have good intentions and we can ask the select board, but I already know their answer because they just kind of like after the last town meeting, well, whatever type attitude is my opinion only. They have these buildings is their big project to work on. Miraculous, I mean, thank God that David was able to find the money to budget 2019. Um, you know, maybe there's some money that comes back every year. You don't want to run too thin that there's there that we could already pay for somebody for staffing. Um, but, you know, I, I don't see the select board approving it or anytime soon changing the government. So we can spin our wheels all we want, and I just don't see it happening. So uh, I'm reminded of Bill Keegan's words of, you know, when you have a disagreement between two parties, can you walk it back to the point where you do have agreement? Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe that's what we need to do here, is that we're all trying to do the best thing for the town of Hadley. We're talking about two different ways of approaching that, that, that need to do the, the thing for the community. Can you st take a couple of steps back to find out where you have a partnership and s sort of reform the mission from that point? Start talking about, okay, if we agree upon this issue, then how do we make sure that we continue to agree upon the next part of this project? Sorry. Of course. Well, respectfully, I mean, we came to that point when we were talking about shared services or regional about IT, HR, and finance. Yeah. Not even for those services, we had studies done from years ago now. Mm -hmm. And we formed subcommittees or working groups, whatever they were, that were two or three members from between the Select Board Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. And progress was slow. I mean, we still have a couple suggestions. There's, I think, something to talk about with IT and HR. Mm -hmm. Finance probably the least so right now. That could go into the override. We made progress, but it was slow. And to Amy's point, maybe not enough to make an adequate point to town meeting to have a surefire convincing argument, right? Mm -hmm. But then I see this as the select board turns over, as things come, I mean, we just talked about a DVW building. Can you imagine the undertaking and the time <laughs> of something like that? Mm -hmm. Other stuff comes up. The form of government's going to be the last thing. It's always gonna get kicked back if something more pressing comes up. When the gentlemen were here from the Massachusetts Municipal Association, they said, take your time with it. It's going to be a two or three year long process. You put together the committee, you know, you do all that stuff. And without, you know, an HR staff person to go out and collect, you know, do the wage studies, do the position comparisons, without a finance person to be handling like the long range capital planning or 
financial projections for the growth of Hadley and departments and stuff like that. Without that support staff in place to help that committee or the select board or the finance committee, how is it going to make any progress? How is it ever going to happen? It, you don't put everything in place. You don't hire a whole team of IT, you know, two or three staff persons in HR, et cetera. You take a modest step to give us some capacity to grow to then give us a, a look at government. I just well, don't see the common ground, sorry, back to David's point, I don't see the common ground having gotten anywhere, even though we did agree, we were on the same page with things. I don't see that um, when we talked to the select border in the past when we've mentioned the form of government, how I've always seen it is really all they did was say, really talk about David's role, it, it seemed like. It was, it, it felt like it wasn't really looking at the whole form of government, it wasn't looking at or, or is this a good organizational structure? You know, it wasn't looking at, oh, this uh, chief can hire and fire, but this one can't, didn't make sense. There's a lot of things that don't make sense, right? But I think the whole focus was more on David's role. And so I think a lot of, when, when, when I would hear people talking, especially the um, select board, it sounded like they didn't want to give up any of their, um, uh, get, Bring it power. Power, sure. And give it to David. They didn't want to, it felt like they wanted him to do his job, but then, but they wanted to keep control. They wanted to have the ultimate control instead of giving it to him. But I feel like if, if you did the whole, it, it's not just about that. I think it's, it's more about the whole organizational structure. All the way down to, you know, um, appointed versus elected. We're talking about some of those positions. You're talk, we talked about where a, a little bit about the, um, you know, Park and Rec was in there last year. You know, who has what authorities? Again, if you, and, to his point, if you hire an HR person and maybe an IT, and right now, he, David handles everything that comes no, to his door. Everything is a team effort. Okay, so, like, but. Thank you for your confidence, but it, I couldn't. The select board puts a lot on you. And I know that, you know, because they're part-time. You're, you're the full-time person, and you're supposed to give, be giving them the information. Correct? There you go. And to David, David's point, we just had Marlo come in and look at the amount that he's doing on his own budget, and the amount mm -hmm. of time he's spending on that just to save a couple bucks here or there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, thank God that Marlo has the financial sensibilities to be able to do that, mm -hmm. right? But we're relying mostly on David and department heads mm -hmm. and the other staff to do that kind of work at what expense or how much time or how much inefficiency. So, yeah. so to answer his question as a board, how do you feel about asking the um, selectmen? Well, I was going to ask uh, about the idea. I mean, I, I obviously, or not, maybe it's not obvious, but my um, preference would be to have enough money to, to get an override right away for all of these. Um, but if it appears that it's just not going to pass, there's no way, then what would pass? Like instead of hiring, you know, an IT and an HR and, um, you know, somebody else, what, what if we just chose what was the most important to start with and just tried to get that passed? I agree. So I would, my choices would be the HR and the IT. Well, we did pair it back, and my understanding of how the override could work, you can basically ask, we have an IT position, perhaps it was in capital, depending on our agreement with Northeast IT, and flush that out a little bit, and HR position, which I can talk about some stuff we have going with the HCOG, HR. might be interesting, and the finance director position. So that's one position each, and you can structured, I understand, a la carte, so you can say you can vote for if you want IT and HR, but you really don't feel comfortable hiring a finance position, take two, not three. So I mean, that's paring down kind of as much as we could already. Mm -hmm. And then if it came down to it, maybe they just support IT, something like that. Mm -hmm. right. right. But but if it's not going to pass, what can we do to make it pass? So, um, you know, I'm just wondering if, if we just got really clear about what we thought the one most important was and the person was, and then we just tried to support that. 
this year, and then the next one, the next year, and then the third one, the third, you know, I'm, instead of trying to shove everything down, obviously we need it, there's a lot that we need, but um, if it's not going to get voted, what can we do, what would get voted is what I think, I, I guess I'm, I'm trying to say, that maybe one person is, is better well, than none. the select board can, you can actually, can, um, I guess, correct me, David. So say if we wanted to hire an HR person, it's salary is 40000 say, with the insurance, so we'll just say $60,000 top for, like, general purposes here. Can we just add that into the budget and then hope that we have the $60,000? I understand it'd have to be a balance of budget, so we'd have to increase our revenue projections or our reliance on free cash to well, some extent. He relies on, we rely on free cash every year. And, you know, so. But here's the other thing, on your look, as that would be one full position. Now you look at that position, would that include that HR person be just doing HR as far as hiring, firing, looking at legal things, or would they be doing payroll benefits, that kind of thing? So would you be taking HR, I don't think, would be doing payroll, first of all. Okay. But if you get the funding for the person, and then we can figure out what actually you want the person to focus on. Okay. I, I don't know. My HR department does payroll benefits, all those things. So if that's how I see and we, HR. When we talk to HR, is quite a wide net yeah. of HR responsibilities you could define, and that's where the select board should be much more involved in terms of defining that. In terms mm -hmm. of the money alone, I mean, as we went through with FIRE last year, if we could squeeze out another position for anything, we would yeah. have done it by now. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. as we've been going through line by line, it's going so quickly with these different departments because there's just no fat to trim anymore. Right. And that's part of the point about building capacity is that we keep falling behind on various things. And I'll take capital planning as an example, right? So look at the buildings that just came up. And we keep talking about the tax bill not wanting to be raised any higher, not raised any higher. When we do that, we keep pushing it back however many years that things are going into disrepair, or it's in desperate need, look at the Department of Public Works, until finally the taxpayers will bite the bullet. And maybe the plan with the senior center, there, there's a lot surrounding that, how the process went down, how word got out, communication, transparency, all that stuff. It could have been handled better, to say the least. So we're shooting ourselves in the foot by always trying to keep costs to the bare minimum to squeeze out an extra position out of an operating budget, move more stuff into capital. And we need to start putting in a little more to build some of that capacity, right? To actually invest in ourselves in some respects to save money down the road. I mean, Marla said something along the lines of, um, you know, in growing a DPW, um, what was the example he's using? Basically, the roads. The roads. The infrastructure needs the work. It's going to be more of an upfront cost, but eventually it'll save you the money. Mm -hmm. I think from the finance committee's perspective, that's what we can try and make an argument on. The finance director is an upfront cost, but how much is it going to save us in terms of being able to guide the committees working on, like, the senior center was a previous example, the DPW when it comes up, this, is this budgeting process. This is why I think the finance person should be the, maybe the first person we hire if we did. If we did. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to your point about paring it down, I think we made those equally strong arguments for each one of those three positions. IT, we know how crucial that is, and everyone's been on the same page about like even just basic like computer service or getting things on the cloud and coordinated either more administratively to help David or more infrastructure in terms of our wiring and network. Like we pared it down to the point where like any one of those three things I think is an easy sell by this point. It's just that huge stigma around the word override, yeah. operational override especially. It's never passed in Hadley and that voters mm -hmm. will never go for. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, if you can't make the easy argument, a common sense argument, articulate it well, for a minimal amount of money, we're talking a couple hundred thousand, all three positions included, mm -hmm. if you can't make that argument and even think it'll have a, a shot in hell of passing, what are we doing? How are we ever going to make any kind of progress? How is form of government ever going to pass? You said we couldn't even talk about just Davis' position, so let's expand it out to Parks and Rec and all these other things. Well, I think you need to have, you need to, like when um, you watch Johnny um, Mitch come in and do a presentation, he, he did all his background. He did a lot of homework. He did, they were against having North Hadley Hall um, Fire Station, I think, at first. Um, but he 
came through. He did a lot of homework on it. He, they had a committee. He came in and he had his whole presentation done. And yeah, it went, but he did, uh, you could see the work and the work of that committee. And they listened. Um, and I think that's what needs to be done. I think you need uh, work and the work of a committee and I think they'll listen. So maybe, maybe but we did talk to the select board about making a committee. Yeah. Where'd it go? What and happened? We, we, have to, uh, we have to ask. I, I believe they said it, the finance committee could ask. I mean, if we go in, so say on the tri board meeting and ask, I would like to, um, like to form a committee uh, to review change of government and to see if they would allow that to happen. They're not, because we already did that and you had two of them say, two or three, no, the only one who agreed to it was, would like to see that happen was Molly. All right, well, I, I mean, I don't, I, I, my understanding was is they just, they're not interested in doing something right then and there. They don't, they don't necessarily, off the top of their head, I felt like they didn't just to ask them, do you want to change the form of government? They're like, uh, it's not as, it's not on my list. But if you want to do it, go ahead, type of thing. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's the way they've always been. Yeah. So, so someone needs to work. Change. You need, you need to do some work on it. You need to work it. I mean, they don't. I mean, you need a committee and you need to work. So, if you go back to our meeting that we had Plus, with by Molly, the time, by the time that changes, you're going to have a new committee. By the time the the um, you by the time a form of government committee goes through everything and presents something, you would have a new select board anyways. Okay, so I sense that there, we all agreed on something to begin with and then now there's been a breakdown on that part too. So I get that. I would characterize it a little differently and I would say we all, we all still agree. But we just, we're the just timing kind of is limited different. by the idea that, um, you know, we need to maximize the chance for it actually getting passed, you know. And um, I, I don't know this town as well as you all because I haven't been here that long. But the sense I keep getting from people over and over again is that no one will go for it. And unless, you know, unless somehow we make the pitch for it. Mm -hmm. So you so your saying that let's do it, let's make the pitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. And so can we do that at this next meeting? Just we need to uh I mean you can meeting. do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I was thinking that um my own experience of uh, suggesting the tri board and that uh, I sat down and I thought, okay, so here, here's the problem. The central problem is that the Finance Committee, the Select Board, and the School Committee don't communicate on a regular basis, and so it tends to set up these artificial divisions that are unproductive and you have to get past them in order to get anything done. So the solution is that we need to talk to each other on a regular basis. So I wrote up a two-page memo saying this is what the what the tri board would do this is a problem that it would address this is how you'd implement it this is how many times a month you'd be meeting and i presented that paper to the select board and it took about a year for the select board to say hey this is a good idea but i think if you give them something concrete written out Ex explain it in, a, in ways that they can go back to and read it again and say, oh, this is what the problem is. Maybe I have a better solution or maybe this is the best solution that, that that's available. I think that's going to be effective in the long run. Um, I think if we just talk, what is it, nine people in a room, you're going to get a whole lot of cross currents that aren't going to focus the attention on the central problem and the possible solution to that problem. Mm -hmm. I so think I'd, that's what we... So I'd, I'd write something up. I think that's... Well, Gabriel wrote a nice letter that we presented to them. Have we ever gotten a response to it? From the select board? Remember that letter he presented I think, to them? I think you got an acknowledgement that the general con contours of what you were talking about 
worked for them and hence you've got a budget process which is unfolding right now along the lines of the letter that you that you wrote okay so you're you're taking the budget you're going to be making the recommendations if there's problems or areas of disagreement you'll work it out but I, so i think it, the process we're going through is an embodiment of what you requested in that letter maybe not everything mm -hmm. in that letter but i think this is i think when we had the meeting with molly you and I were both there, and Molly was there, and yourself and Brian West mm -hmm. also was there. Her within her, within, I think the sense I got from that meeting was is that the select board within themselves can't come to an agreement on former government and what we want to do uh, for an override. And I thought I left that meeting is that we were gonna continue because we were on that board, we were on the process of making that happen, and she was supposed to discuss with her board of kind of seeing that through. I, I don't remember exact words, but I just kind of feel, again, that something else came up, senior center building, and then they can't focus on anything else. So we have to come back to that, like you're saying, come back to the common ground where we all agreed um, working on something and present it to them. I, in my opinion, would like to have Gabriel speak on Wednesday night and see if they let it fly. To me, it doesn't, I was always told it does not hurt to ask. I think on Wednesday we should speak up, and, 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 and that's fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. You want to speak on, as far as asking for the override to the select board? I'm fine with that. You have a good argument to see how they well, you do. You go. I think we also, also should speak to them and ask them if they would consider um, doing a subcommittee to do some research on a form of government. Well, right now we're focusing on an override. That's what we're focusing on. That, to me, is separate. The override that we are consisting of now is not a government change as far as how... But why, why, why how would it affect it? We're not going to say... If because we it's ask about them, hiring three full-time positions. But why, why couldn't you have a, commit, a subcommittee at the same time? Not you, I mean, or, or all of us, I'm saying. Just ask the... This that's it's two separate issues, right? Though. So we it would be completely separate. We'd say, do we have your permission to form a subcommittee? They to have research? to. They have to. Isn't that how the fire department subcommittee? They are the ones who initiated but can, it. But they can delegate that authority. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's good. I right. already know. I mean, Ali mentioned a couple people that were very interested in doing something like that. Okay. I just don't think we have the time to get to both on Wednesday if they have a double-packed agenda from missing a meeting already. Yeah, I think we should spend the tri-board time on the time-sensitive issue, which would be the override, if we want to get it on the warrant for I also time. Think, I also think that there's some things that's come up in our budget discussions that we at least need to acknowledge the fact that the schools came in with a lesser increase than they originally presented to me when the budget was due is a good thing but it still means that we have not we have not done anything to provide them with the increase that they're requesting so that that in and of itself is something to talk about mm -hmm. so i don't think the select board will advocate for an override this town meeting i just don't see that happen what i think they might do is allow it to be on the warrant if the finance committee feels strongly that we would like to present this mm -hmm. So what I'm asking is, does the finance committee want to make that request of the select board on Wednesday? I do. To put it on the warrant. And I can put together tomorrow or maybe Wednesday morning a small packet of just a compilation of where we're at with ITHR and finance, because I think we might be a little farther along than everyone realizes. Mm -hmm. And just to get everyone on the same page for a basis of discussion on Wednesday, just a brief recap saying this is where we're at, and then an ask to say we want the finance committee wants to put it on the warrant. Mm -hmm. I think that's our best shot at it. Okay. And we can take a vote on it if you'd like, because I know Amy's been a little more hesitant to really Well, I, I'm forward. not on the same page, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop anything or, or want to have any, you know, I, I think that if, if, hey, if it passed, that's great. I just don't see it happening. Sure. Um, okay, that's it. 
Okay. But I'm not going to, if you want to present it, that, that's fine with me. We are hoping the select board says the exact same thing. <laughs> that's right. As they say, let the people vote for it. Right? That's what I hope. That's where you go. So, okay. so tomorrow I'm meeting with uh, the ambulance subcommittee in the town of Amherst to talk about what to do about ambulance service come July 1st. So uh, by Wednesday I should have some information about what kind of increases would a continuation of service with the town of Amherst look like versus what kind of package can we put together with the, uh, the action the EMS that uh, responded to our RFP. So mm -hmm. that number may change. For the worse. Mm -hmm. It'll okay. change. It'll <laughs> change. Mm -hmm. Lots of these changes. Can I just ask you quickly, I did uh, watch the Senior Center um, forum, you know, mm -hmm. the discussion. I got into it late because of a work issue. Um, so how do you feel that that turned out? Do you think all the people's questions were answered? I was I was not there. I had to be on family there. business in Maryland, but I did talk to Jerry Devine and Suzanne Travisano afterwards. Okay. Uh, they felt in general that it was a good opportunity for people to receive the same information at the same time. Um, and uh, they will they will, uh, the select board will be meeting with the American Legion two Wednesdays from now, mm -hmm. and we'll see how things work out. Okay. Uh, the Senior Center is moving forward with the RFQ for the pre-qualification of general contractors, so that project is still moving forward. Excellent. General, so the Senior Center is moving forward with the contractors? Is that what so you're saying? Finding one, trying to find one. Oh, trying to trying find, to find one. one. Not to find yeah. a, a contractor, but to develop a pool of qualified contractors who will then bid on the project. Right. That doesn't cost anything to put an RFQ out, right? Mm, well, just minimal. Advertisement. Yeah, yeah. In, just in case something happens. Mm -hmm. Nothing's guaranteed. So one of the things I thought before is that when we talked a little bit, you mentioned that we can't really change it, it no matter what happens. Nothing really changes too much because there's contracts out. Because what? Well, I mean, there's there's a lot of talk about what's going to happen. I mean, with you know. Well, with let's let's talk a little bit. Of, let's talk about what it looks like if the funding is removed. Okay, so we've spent about two hundred sixty thousand dollars on the project so far. Mm -hmm. 260000 so a little bit more than a quarter of a million dollars. And could you reuse any of that if you were to move it or no, do we've something? No, spent that. No, it's gone. No, but, I'm, but for the design, you could move the design somewhere, possibly, right? So you could reuse money that was spent. You can't reuse the money that you've spent. You've spent the money. On what, though? On design, OPM services, sure. site surveys. Soil analysis. Well, the soil geotype. and that some of the stuff you probably couldn't if you weren't keeping it in the same spot. But the design of the yeah, of, you purchased it, so you could use it. Reuse it. Right? Reuse it. Right. Yeah. No, you can't reuse it. You can't. You spent the money. Well, you no, spent. No, you spent it on a design. You got the design. You have a design. You have a design. To the extent that that design is transportable, I understand what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. But. So that, that generally doesn't work very well. You that design is made for that particular right. piece yeah. of property over yeah. there. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So we couldn't say if we own a piece of property over there, we couldn't say you have to modify that design to fit. There'd Maybe be, sure. yeah, yeah. there would be adjustments, but right. the overall building style itself would stay the same, right? I reckon so. So there's cost savings there, but. Well, let, let me spell it out. Okay, so we've spent over a quarter of a million dollars on the project so far, so mm -hmm. there would be that money that would not be productive. We would not, should, mm -hmm. If the project somehow was canceled, we would lose all of that opportunity wrapped up in that money. We've also started receiving the first payments, the first of five payments on the three and a half million dollars for the library, so we would have to return that money somehow that's 
$732,000, if I'm remembering that right. So you're talking really about a million dollars that would have to go into fixing the project if it were stopped. But I, now let's talk about the money that it could cost if, it, if something else happens. The worst, worst case scenario on the other side. Yeah. That's my concern. Okay. So they decide that it wasn't handled properly and they try to they try to stop it and they or for whatever case there's a lawsuit that comes out now um just because i've been stopped i stopped at the grocery store and, and the people have mentioned stuff to me and, and they said what would be the basis for the lawsuit i don't know there's I my i think we would need to know more about you don't that. know anything about that that there's a possibility of a lawsuit. What would be the basis for the lawsuit? I heard not that too. They have a fund going. Yeah, and the the attorney's name that I. Well, first of all, anybody who approaches me outside in the grocery store or comes to my house, I say I'll see you at a meeting, because I don't take discussion, you know, because that's my personal time, and yeah. so I kind of feel like discussion like that is turns into a bigger mound and then everybody's wondering and that's why we had the forum where everybody could go and ask their questions mm -hmm. so but I did on um, what you're saying I did hear something of that as well but nothing has been decided because the Legion and the select board haven't really met yet yeah. okay so I, I, I mean I don't all I hear is when I hear people are talking about a lawsuit I not and I'm not saying that you want to I don't necessarily think it's a good idea to move anything anywhere. I mean, I think it should be centralized, right? So that's just, should you move it way down North Hadley, that doesn't sound like a smart solution to me, but. And put it next to an emergency response facility. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> I not mean, a compatible use. But you but, do have to listen to all that are involved. And I think that's what they're asking. What would be the basis for any lawsuit on this matter? I, I have no idea. I don't know what it is, but to it's something that we need to figure out because a, a lawsuit can be a lot of money. And if we need to put it on hold for a time being until we make sure that we're not getting ourselves into a can of worms, then it might be something you need to. So we need to know what the basis is and so, why what the lawsuit I'm going to make a joke. So yeah. within the override, add 100000 for our legal fees <laughs> to the budget. Well, it, I mean, so, legal fees are so huge. I, so I think, I think we need to let the select board and the, the American Legion have their meeting. Yeah. Right. Uh, it, I'm not seeing a clear path from where we are right now to a lawsuit. Okay. I think that. So I think that changing your course of action based upon the possibility, however likely or unlikely a lawsuit is, is not a, a worthwhile investment of the town's time, opportunity, and people's money. So. Right now, we just focus on when we go to town meeting there's two articles right mm -hmm. and from what I gather from you and speaking to legal counsel that they really don't have a lot of merit so I think that the Legion and the resident the people involved with the Legion everybody needs to be heard and I think that's what they need that people want they just want to be heard in what their feelings are about the building being so close and and taking parking if it is from them because the legion is just as important as the senior center it's been there for years and the people involved in it are just as important as the senior center and i just think that they need to come to a common ground and again until they meet with the select board, you're not gonna know anything. And in small towns, lots of this happens all the time. And you don't take merit of it until you actually see it happen. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I'm asked, and I don't know of the, what the mayor is, I just, people, I've, I've heard the lawsuit, so that's why I'm asking, mm -hmm. you know, what it is, what, well, you know, do what we would, need to take care of? What know? would they sue for? Well, I don't know. I, I the whole. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that well, uh, you know, it, nobody's been physically injured. There may be some loss of opportunity. Well, once we take over, they, I mean, I, my understanding is the lawsuit would be if we took their their area. I would guess. 
So if we if if the senior center took their parking, is that I'm thinking that's what they're after. It's not their parking. The is there an parking. agreement with the town that know. they have the right to use that parking for what years? Is there so any kind of agreement? Nothing in writing that I've found. Okay, but you obviously looked for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and there's a sign there saying town parking. Mm -hmm. So this but will there's all be been so a mutual people, agreement. So people, so people can use it because it's town parking. But there has been an unwritten uh, mutual agreement that the I'm region uses that. that. I know you're not. I'm saying it. Mm -hmm. That's just what I see. Hmm. Kind of like my neighbor's step has been on my lawn all these years. I know it. I don't care. But someday somebody brings it up, and guess what happens? They got to dig it up and move it. Type thing. So I don't think that's for us to us person to worry about on the finance committee at this point. Did, um, so this is all going to be talked about on um, Wednesday. Two Wednesdays from now. Oh, two Wednesdays from now. Okay. Excellent. Will you be at the meeting too? I'm sorry. You'll be at the meeting with the uh, select board in the Legion. Sure. Is it going to be here? Uh, no, it'll be over at Hopkins. Oh, okay. Because <coughs> we expect a crowd again. Okay. Yeah. And that's on the twenty. That's uh, another Wednesday from this coming one. Yeah, yeah and that will be here. Twenty-eighth. Do you know if they'll be doing it live? Don, uh, are we going to be doing it live from next Wednesday? Not this yep. Wednesday. The following. Yeah. You yeah. will be, so I should be able to pick it up on YouTube. We will be streaming live in yes. Okay, because totally. totally. I'll be out of town. Six p.m. Yep. at Hopkins. Yep. So, if in the meantime you need any assistance from me, because I know you're going to be gathering stuff, mm -hmm. just shoot me an email, call me, whatever. Okay. If I don't answer my phone, just shoot me an email, and I'll call you for work. You have anything else? So today the, uh, the House Ways and Means Committee finished up their public hearings and so the uh, House will start producing a budget. That budget should be available sometime in April. So we'll get another look at, just before going into town meeting, we'll see another look at the, uh, at the cherry sheet. Are they behind schedule with their meetings? Mm -hmm. Not terribly. Not terribly? Not terribly. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe by a week. Well, that's not too bad. Yeah. You'll keep us updated. Of course. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? No. Oh, okay. So good. Thanks for being here. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.